I'm here with Mr Ford who's a consultant trauma and orthopaedic surgeon and we're going to talk today about wrist fractures. So first of all, classic medical student question, what is the definition of a, of a for example, Collie's fracture? Uh, okay, so this is a, a much overused term in, uh, in the orthopaedic experience. Um, and so classically, Collie's described this before x-rays were invented and so very much a clinical diagnosis and he talks about a fracture that occurs in osteoporotic bone within one inch of the joint with dorsal angulation and displacement giving the classic dinner fork deformity and also associated with a ulnar styloid fracture. So that's the classic Collie's fracture which sure we do see frequently uh, particularly in older patients obviously um, but everything else really would be considered a distal radial fracture and one is probably uh, safer simply calling them distal radial fractures until asked otherwise. Um, the other names attached obviously include uh, a uh, Smith's fracture which displaces the other way to the uh, anterior side, the palmar side, and also a Barton's fracture which is a partial articular fracture, uh, i.e. it goes into the joint and again is associated with uh, an unstable uh, wrist and fracture. So to save ourselves some uh, sort of anguish, we should really talk about them anatomically as opposed to using these, these Absolutely. Names. So simply refer to it as a distal radial fracture and you'll upset less people. Yeah, brilliant. And um, obviously we've identified it on an x-ray in A&E based on the history. What kind of uh, things should we be looking for in examination? So the vital thing initially is the median nerve function. Uh, it sits within, or it's tethered within the carpal tunnel in the carpus there and is therefore draped over the fracture with grossly displaced fractures to the dorsum, uh, the nerve can be stretched and one can have an acute carpal tunnel syndrome uh, with median nerve dysfunction. Um, the other key element of the examination is the function of the extensor pollicis longus, purely because surprisingly in relatively undisplaced fractures, this can rupture during the treatment and obviously one needs to know whether it's functioning initially and then certainly on every other review in fracture clinic it needs to be assessed. So those are the two key things as well as uh, obviously ensuring it's not an open injury as particularly in older patients the ulnar side of the fracture can come through the wrist commonly on the uh, palmar side. Okay and if we're talking about the uh, the closed fracture uh, of any of the types how could as a junior we manage them in A&E for example? So this varies slightly from hospital to hospital uh, a manipulation of some form is uh, the key element to it and so one's looking to realign and reduce the fracture. Um, this certainly is a very skilled uh, maneuver and it's something that one should be aiming to master and certainly one can. And the quality of that initial reduction really dictates uh, the subsequent treatment of that patient and can allow them to avoid any surgery in the way that a poorly done manipulation will destine them for surgery often. Um, in some centers it's done with a hematoma block, so an injection of local anaesthetic into the fracture and then a simple manipulation. Other centres use a Beers block where anaesthetic is injected intravenously to give a regional anaesthesia to that limb. Uh, that's done for example in Nottingham and also in some centres it's done by the emergency department staff and others by the orthopaedic team and really it will simply vary but ultimately one's aiming to anatomically reduce the fracture to correct all of the displacements. If you um, fractured your wrist in Nottingham, would you prefer the orthopaedic team or the A&E team to reduce it? Uh, so I would be happy with anyone doing it who was skilled and had an interest in what it looked like afterwards. Good, good. Okay, and uh, whether or not that manipulation is extremely successful, obviously we can think about operative management. So what kind of operations are available for these patients? The key differences really are between internal fixation or not. Uh, so traditionally external fixation and uh, K-wire fixation were commonly practiced. Uh, there's no doubt these give poorer looking x-rays as the reduction is never quite as beautiful as one can achieve with a plate. Uh, and recently uh, the classic plate, the DVR plate many people have heard of, which works very well and gives good looking x-rays. Although curiously, despite really quite a large amount of research effort put into this recently, I think it's fair to say that no one has convincingly shown that anything other than the x-rays improve with the internal fixation. 
which isn't to say that we don't do it and it's uh, not necessarily the wrong thing to do, but I think one needs to be very clear on what one is hoping to achieve. So I think with internal fixation, you have a better looking x-ray and a quicker return to function. Uh, by the time one gets to between three months and a year, uh, I think no one has convincingly shown any improvement in function at that stage. And certainly in the long term, there's no evidence that the better reductions improve any sort of uh, post-traumatic arthritis either. Um, so one just needs to be clear on what we're trying to achieve with that treatment. But those certainly are the treatment options. Okay. And uh, regardless, so say we talk about operative management, um, what kind of long-term outcomes are we looking at? Um, so most people will get back really to their pre-injury state uh, with a good reduction and uh, some physiotherapy. Um, there is no doubt that it takes some time to achieve that and one sees improvement for up to six to nine months following the injury. Um, in terms of uh, objective assessment, the grip strength is probably never quite as strong as it was. But having said that, most people are able to fully function with a slightly reduced maximum grip strength um, as life doesn't require that. Um, certainly one wouldn't expect a great deal of post-traumatic arthritis and one would expect good function to return. Brilliant. Okay, so I think to summarise, the key things are the classification, talking about it anatomically as, as opposed to using these names. Also, um, good and adequate anaesthesia for a good reduction. Um, and I think finally, it doesn't matter who does the reduction as long as they're skilled enough. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thank you very much.